Huntington's disease is a horrible illness that leaves its victims without the ability to speak, eat, or walk. 30,000 Americans are battling it, and another 200,000 are at risk of getting it. It's genetic, progressive, and fatal. Plus, there's no known cure. But one family from Pearl River is fighting to find one. The Flemings formed a charity to build awareness and to raise money. And its annual event, called the Mickey Sullivan Duathlon, is October 9th. It's named for a man who died from Huntington's. And for more info, go to fighthd.org. Rich? Thank you very much, Karen. And joining us now is Michael Fleming, whose father passed from Huntington's and his sister is living with the disease. We're also joined by Robin Caputo, whose brother has Huntington's. Guys, thank you very much. Thanks, and uh, it's amazing, we talked about this three years ago. Um, and since then, I really didn't know about it before. And I mm -hmm. hear about it, and, and as we were talking before we went on the air, Obviously, it's, it's not relegated to a single community. This is a global disease. It's starting to get more attention, but let's try and put a human face on it. And Robin, start from you as to, you know, what your loved one's going through, but also how it impacts the family when he learned and, and really what has happened since he was diagnosed. Um, my brother, Tom. Uh, was diagnosed in his late 40s with Huntington's. He now lives in a care facility in Manhattan called Terrence Cardinal Cook. And he's been there for almost four years now. Um, my father also has it, was diagnosed around 80. Um, and it does in fact affect the entire family. Obviously you've lost uh, someone yes. and, and you have a, a family member living with it. And <clears throat> talk about the descent because it doesn't it doesn't happen overnight, um, and it's a ruthless disease. Yes, yeah, and just to dovetail on, on, on what Robin just said, yeah, it's, it's all encompassing in terms of, you know, the impact on the family. It's just every day, 24-7, 365 days a year, you're thinking about a loved one and, you know, uh, caring for them in their different stages. So there's three different stages of the disease and you know what they need from care to wheelchair to how they eat to how they speak but to your question it's it's it impacts you know the ability to eat to talk to to walk and to think you know so think about you know gradually losing all of those capabilities you know over a progression of time and uh, the descent is 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 startling and depends on the on the individual you know from how it's passed from you know a parent to a to a, a daughter or, or son there's different journeys that they take and it can accelerate. And there's, our, there's even uh, children, they call juvenile HD, that have an even faster rate of dissension into this horrific disease. So it, it has been getting, getting much more publicity and attention. I think a lot of that is because the next generation coming up is more, um, more strong in advocating to be socially aware and get people involved. And, and the social media helps as well and, and I think it's, you know, it's gotten to the point where, you know, the technology has helped, but there's still no cure today, mm -hmm. and it, all we can do is just help these people manage it. And while well, you mentioned certainly there's a juvenile component to this, a lot of times this happens uh, in adulthood. Correct. And I remember from our conversation, one thing that stood out with me was a father who was starting to slur his speech, right. and people were making the leap, oh, the guy, you know, must be in the bottle or whatever else, and the inability and, and stumbling is walking, and and it takes away, before it takes away all your capacities, it takes away, as you guys were saying, a lot of the pride in the person because right. they're not who they were and the right. disease robs them of their identity in many ways and that they need care around the clock and that they know there's no cure for this and they know it's degenerative. And, and I just thought how heartbreaking for the person but also for the family because there is no, you know, we'll get the, we'll get the right cure here, we'll get it, and that's why it's so important, the research. And to that end, Robin, you put a face on it, um, brother, but the genetic aspect of this is that, as I understand it and help me, there's a 50-50 chance that it passes on, right? There's a 50-50 right? chance uh, for a child to um, get Huntington's if their parent has had it. So when does that test happen and how, I imagine some of the decisions, life decisions you have to make. Yeah. Yes, so you, we all would have to decide whether we want to uh, be tested to see if we carry this gene and then we'll develop Huntington's. You find out, it's a death sentence. So some people wish to find out, some people don't. It's a cross that I think everyone at risk has. And I think the other, you know, 
HD has so many awful components, but for my sister, Cara Jean, who, who um, is fortunate to have such a loving community to, to, to set up Team KJ, to see, her, to see her path of destruction from her father, and most people do, you know, they see, as you pointed out accurately, that, um, you know, there is a very horrific path forthcoming, and they see what's going to happen, and things are going to be slowly stripped away from their life, and their their honor and their ability to communicate and speak and to hold a job or perceptions. My sister was pulled over by the police um, in New Jersey and, and to your point, you know, before we, we knew the extent of the disease and, and thought she was drunk and, and we started to help them educate the police officers about people and put bracelets on and things like that. So it's an ongoing education and, and even educating the medical community that sometimes aren't aware about, aren't up to speed about this disease. Mm. We have mutual friends, and <coughs> the way they speak about uh, your sister, and I'm sure little, that the one thing is that there's strength in numbers, yes. and there is fantastic professionals that can help with quality of care for this, and obviously a huge need for research. Right. Uh, talk about um, how, yes, while it may be a death sentence, it's not without hope, and it's also not without need. Team KJ is a, is a charity, local charity in Pearl River, started by my sister Cara Jean's friends. And its mission is basically to help those, and unfortunately, you know, to your point uh, earlier, there's more people in our community that are coming out of, out of this, you know, behind the scenes and, and coming forward and saying, we are an HD family, we need help. Um, so we help them in terms of what they need for day to day but also contribute to Uni University of California Davis stem cell, which is one of the most advanced um, research facilities in the country. And I have a relationship with them when I lived in San Francisco, and we, we still uh, work with Dr. Nelter and her team, and they're doing some remarkable work uh, all across HD in terms of stem cell for juveniles as well as adults, et cetera, and those at risk. Uh, Robin, I can only imagine how expensive uh, an undertaking it is when a yes. family, yeah. an HD family has this, um, the constant care, let alone all the medical treatments. Yes, he needs constant care around the clock, uh, which he's able to get at Ter Terrence Cardinal. When I first signed up for the duathlon three years ago, the first question they asked me when I went to pick up my race packet was, what do you need? Um, they help the community and people affected by it because they know that it is costly and what caregivers are going through a lot. And you can't go through this by yourself, right? You need no. a community, right? You need community, absolutely. So let's talk about this race, uh, October yes. 9th. Um, and for anybody mm -hmm. sitting at home who says, I'm not a runner, they don't get off that easy, okay. right? There's, okay. there's a couple they different, different options, power right? Walk. That's right, there is. <laughs> there is the, uh, the 5K walk run. And this is the first year we're doing it, and we've got so far really, you know, strong feedback on it. And it allows, you know, other people, as Robin mentioned before, to get involved who aren't at, and, and the duathlon is not a killer duathlon. It's two mile uh, run through a trail at Pearl Middle School, a 10 mile bike, two mile run, and then we've got Subsequently, after that, we have the uh, 5K walk run. It's a fantastic cause here. We've got up on our screen um, all the contact information for you, and I can't say enough how much of uh, both a necessary but a good cause it is. Um, and if, like you're, like myself here, you're just learning about this, um, it certainly is one of those diseases that uh, has not gotten attention to date as much as it needs to. And uh, hopefully, from this conversation, you'll see definitely the need. Uh, Michael, Robin, thank you very much. And, and again, here October 9th, everybody, be a part of it if you can. All right, that is going to wrap up the time that I have for this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here on Monday, 6 p.m. as always.